So as you may have gathered, my name is Darren Wood, um, and I've got a bit of a secret before I even get into it. I'm not a developer. I'm a web designer. Um, I'm a CSSer, an HTMLer, and a complete mangler of JavaScript. So I don't uh, classify myself a coder. So what I'm going to do today is not show you much code. I'm going to show you some tools that I've recently learned about and have been using in the past. Um, I'm going to cover things from Photoshop and image compression through to your text editor, the command line, and even some workflow stuff. So let's get right into it and talk about taming Photoshop. Now, I still use Photoshop to design, all right? It's a habit, maybe. Some people like to design in the browser, and that's fine. You're welcome to do so. But I'm a creature of habit. I love Photoshop. However, Photoshop kind of sucks a bit. Um, and there are a few things that we can fix. And thankfully, it's got a very robust plugin architecture, which means that smarter people than I have built things to make Photoshop awesome. The first thing is this plugin called Atlas CSS. So who uses sprites for their web development? Excellent. Who loves building sprites for web development? This will hopefully make things a little bit easier. So what it is, um, it's a little bit janky, but it works. You set a canvas size of some size. It doesn't really matter. Then you, um, you can update the class name down at the bottom. I'm adding an icon hyphen to my class names. I then import a bunch of images. Um, as you can see, I have a folder of images. And then I click OK. Uh, Photoshop cranks through a bit of code. Um, you wait 10 seconds, and it produces a sprite sheet, which looks like that. You can save that to your file system. And it also produces um, the CSS required. And as you can see, it just creates a class with the folder name, or with the um, icon hyphen that I used earlier and the name of all those images. So immediately, we've saved a bunch of time, a bunch of headaches. If you need to an, add another image to your sprite folder, uh, your sprite image and your sprite CSS, you just drop it in that folder, and it's good to go. So we've already saved like at least three to six weeks of dicking around with images, right? <laughs> the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, a word that I struggle to pronounce. So I'm just going to call it cooler, because it sounds cooler than another word you would say, like color. Um, this is a thing by Adobe. Um, it's a website, uh, cooler.adobe.com. And they've also got this great plugin, which is a color schema. So you give it a color. You can mess around with uh, hues. You can select a bunch of predefined um, color scheme types, like monochromatic, or triad, or complementary, or compound, et cetera, et cetera. If any of you have studied design and color theory, you'll understand this. I have done none of that, so I don't understand it. I just know that I can select something from that drop down, and I can have some colors that work really well. This is awesome, because you'll have a client who will have a main brand color, and you'll look at it, and you'll go, wow, I can use several shades of that. Or you could plug it into this tool and produce a bunch of complementary colors. You can then save those colors um, as a swatch in Photoshop. You can upload them to the Cooler website, and you can share them with the world. Um, very, very useful. Another thing that I find myself doing a lot of is building grids in Photoshop. And Photoshop, I've got guides, so that's useful. Um, but that's about as far as it goes. So this um, little plugin, Guide Guides, is great for building custom grids simply and easily. Uh, you give it a left and right margin. You tell it how many columns you want. You give it a gutter. And it just goes and spews out all of these um, guides for you. If you're not happy with it, you can clear your guides. You can also find the center of a document, which I often have to do for some unknown reason. Um, there are also some predefined grids, as you can see. And if you're not happy with the ways uh, those are laid out, you can alter um, the stuff on the back end. It accepts uh, percentage. It accepts pixels. You can save your favorite grids to this. Um, excellent little app. I use it very, very often. And um, I recommend that you do the same. Now, up until now, 
All of these have been um, free plugins. The guides was free, Cooler is free, um, and the Sprite Generation one is free. Now this one is not free. Uh, this costs like 39 bucks, and it's a little bit controversial because what it's doing is allowing you to cheat at web design. So this is why I've said prototype, because if any of you are actually using this to build full web designs, you should probably reconsider your jobs. Um, but anyway, what this does is it gives you a palette and a bunch of predefined tools that you can use to quickly, quickly build a website. So as you can see, does some things, bam, I've got a header and footer. Hmm, let's change up that header. I prefer that one. That's looking good. Why don't we, I don't know, add like a hero element to the site? Okay, cool, done that. Maybe something below the fold. Um, we can do that too. Click of a mouse, some churning through some stuff, bam. Hey, look, I've already got a website. I can go home. Yeah, no. Um, where this really gets interesting and what I find myself using it for are these form elements. Who likes designing forms in Photoshop? No. This helps with that. Um, it's got a bunch of these predefined ones. Uh, a slider is quite useful. Cool thing about this app is that it builds everything with layer style. So you can come in and you can tweak the way it looks by changing the drop shadows and the inner shadows and the gradients and all of those things. Um, a whole bunch of button things. It's got typography built in. It's very, very fully featured, and it does quite a lot. The thing that I like um, as well is what is coming up um, pretty soon, I think. Oh, no, I may have already missed it. Um, but anyway, it does this thing where it allows you to produce a nifty-looking mock-up that you can present to a client. Um, and when you click that button, it does some magic and Voila, you have this thing that you can present to a client and it's floating in space. Thank you, thank you. Please try the veal. Um, anyway, that's that. Let's move on. Images. Oh. Anyway, so taming images, right? We all use these on the web constantly. And what I'm going to talk about mainly is PNGs or pings, if you want to call them that. Now, the cool thing with the PNG, as you probably all know, is that PNG, 24-bit PNGs have this alpha channel, which means that you can have the semi-transparency happening. So you can do drop shadows, your anti-aliasing looks really sweet, and you can just drop a PNG on top of a gradient background or an image background, and you don't need to worry about all that malarkey. The downside, of course, is that a 24-bit PNG is massive. It's a huge file. It's like dropping an uncompressed JPEG in your website. This is not friendly. However, what a lot of people didn't realize, and I certainly didn't realize until recently, is that 8-bit PNGs also have an alpha channel, which means you can use the um, 256 palettes, uh, colors of an 8-bit PNG and still have that alpha layer. Now, as far as I know, Fireworks is the only app that enables you to actually export those um, PNG 8s with the alpha channel. Um, I don't use Fireworks, so it's completely useless to me. However, there are tools out there. Um, this website, for example, you can drag in a 24-bit PNG, and it will convert it into an 8-bit with the alpha channel. Now, this is all good and well, but maybe sometimes you want a little bit more of a granular control over the color palettes. So here is an example of an app called Image Alpha. And at the bottom, you can change that slider to reduce the number of colors. Now, obviously, if you reduce the number of colors, your image file gets smaller. This is the desired effect. However, you also lose quality. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Um, I pretty much will convert most of my PNG 24s into PNG 8 using this, just because it's you're saving so much file size um, in the long run that I'm pointing at the bottom quite a bit there showing you the, the file size. Like, just reducing it to uh, 20, 256 will save about anywhere between 40 and 70% of the file size. So highly recommend you use this. Um, those of you who use Windows, sorry about that. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, there is an app called Riot, which stands for uh, radical image optimization tool, 
Um, I have not used it, but as far as I know, it does exactly the same as image alpha. Highly recommend you use these. Now, over and above converting those 24 bits to 8 bits, you can also compress the bejesus out of these. Um, Photoshop and Fireworks don't do a particularly good job of compressing PNGs. Um, and this is where you will use other tools. There's this website. There are a bunch of these websites, by the way. This is just the first one in Google called Tiny PNG. You drop your PNG images onto the site. It does some magic and produces a bunch of uh, compressed versions of those. Uh, that's all good and well. What I like to do is run an app on my local machine. And this particular app is called Image Optim. And this does exactly the same thing, except you can bulk do it. So I've dragged a bunch of images in there. And as you can see, it started compressing them already. Um, I got compressed by 11.5%. So that's pretty awesome. And this app does uh, GIFs, it does, does JPEGs, and it does PNGs. So really, really look out for this. Um, those of you on Windows and Linux, um, this is a, a multi-platform option which does exactly the same thing. Try image. Um, and all of these actually end up using a bunch of command line tools. Um, so the first one is PNG Crush. And what this does is it just does regular bog standard PNG compression. Uh, the next one is called JPEG Optim. Same thing, but for JPEGs. Um, and then this one, PNG, um, I don't like to say this word. I don't know why. It just sounds naughty. But um, what this does is it will convert your 24 bits to 8 bits. Um, and these command line tools are pretty rad because you can roll them into your deployment scripts and your build scripts um, if you're that way inclined. Um, now, before I move on to the next bit, I want to talk about something else. Sprites. I've mentioned sprites before. I've shown you a cool way of doing it in Photoshop. But what I'm going to talk about now is using uh, Compass and SAS. Does anyone use SAS? Uh, great. Less. Stylus. So that's good. You all are using um, CSS preprocessors. This is great. I have chosen to use SAS. And one of the main reasons I use SAS is because of this thing called Compass. And it's a framework plugged into SAS. And what it does is this amazing thing. It will make sprites for you. So you import Compass. You import a folder of PNGs. And then you run the magical um, all sprites function. Now, if you look at that function, it's called all-icon-sprites. That icon bit is a reference to the folder in which the images live. So I have a folder in my images folder called icon. And in that folder, I have a bunch of images, right? Then what it does is Compass just goes, hey, cool, I found those images. I'll produce uh, a bunch of CSS for you. Thank you very much. I'll also produce a combined sprite sheet. And you have to do nothing. All you have to do is rejoice, sit back, get a coffee, right? Once again, we have saved hours and hours of sprite generation. Um, it's well worth noting, though, that you can only generate sprites with PNGs. But as I've just told you, that's fine, because we can compress them. Cool. So we're going to get a little deeper now. Photoshop is all fun and colors and what have you. We're now going to get um, a little more serious. I'm going to talk about the text editor. And this is where you, probably most of you spend most of your day. Um, I used to be a big TextMate fan. Any TextMate users out there? No? Nope. Probably because uh, we're living in this world right now. Um, Sublime Text came around, kicked Netscape right in the command line, and took over the world. Um, I use this. I recommend you use this. It is an excellent, excellent um, text editor. Um, too many features to name them all, but I'm just going to cover a few that I use and love. Um, the first one is multi-line editing. Can I get a hell yeah for multi-line editing? Thank you. For those of you who don't know what multi-line editing is, here's something I prepared earlier. So there is a document, and I'm going to show a bunch of different features. Um, I'm going to select CSS. And if I hit Command D, what it will do is select all the next bits of CSS that it finds. Then I can replace that all. It's like a fancy find and replace. 
You can select a bunch of text. You can indent it using command um, uh, square brackets. You can move a whole chunk of code up and down. All of you guys are like, yeah, yeah, my text editor does this too. Wait. Uh, you can do column selecting, right? So I'll just select all of that. Okay, we're interested now, yes. And I can replace that with whatever I want. But where multi-line editing really gets fancy is you can hold down the command and click on multiple different spots on multiple different lines and create multiple carrots that you can then start typing into. This is some fancy shit, man. <laughs> I love it. But let's move on. Um, package control. So Sublime Text has got a bunch of plugins that exist out on the internet and you go to a website and you find them and you read the how to install and you have to first find the packages folder and you don't know where the packages folder is because on a Mac it's hidden inside the thing and you've got to do some stuff and nah. This is where package control comes into it. There's a command uh, that you can run um, in the command palette and you just type uh, package control and you go install package and you can search for a package um, that you want. So for example, this is listing all the packages, but I want to install this color picker, right? So I click that down in the corner. You can see it goes off to the internet, pulls it down, installs it, job done. Thank you for coming. Easy as. Maybe I want to install a different package. I'm running a lot of SAS. I want a better um, syntax highlighter. I can just search for it. Oh, that one looks good. Enter, and it installs. That's great. That's awesome. Um, you can also remove a package, because as it turns out, that particular SAS uh, syntax highlighter wasn't so good, so you can immediately remove it. You don't have to try and remember where the things were. Um, so use this to install all the packages you need, and there are heaps and heaps of them. I'm not going to even attempt to name them all, but go and have a look online. Um, they, I think, on the Sublime Text website have a list of them all. Um, the next thing I want to mention is Emmet. Has anyone heard of Emmet? Okay, the three of you, you know how awesome this is. The rest of you, wait for mind explosion. Uh, it used to be called Zen coding, and there was a reason for that. It makes your coding feel more Zen. And in this case, when I talk about coding, I'm talking about markup and CSS, right? So essentially, it's a bunch of snippets and shorthand syntax that enables you to spew out a bunch of code really simply. So you type some things, you hit tab, and it code completes, essentially. So let's have a look at an example. This is HTML, so what I'm going to first do is go off and install Emmet. I use the package control um, in Sublime, and I search for Emmet, and there it is. It goes off to the internet, does magic, installs it, tells me some guff, and then I'm ready to roll. Um, I hit bang, hit tab, and I've got an HTML5 document ready to go. Um, that's pretty useful. I'm liking this. This is where it gets fun. You write CSS selectors, as you would in a CSS file. And you can also write in a bit of text. Um, you can see I've got a sibling selector. I've got a child selector. You, you can also do groups. So I'm grouping a bunch of these selectors. Um, oh yeah, you can do uh, attribute selectors as well. And I want to make three of those. You hit tab and bam, I've just spewed out this block of code without having to do very much. If you write CSS, you can use Emmet. Um, and you can tab between each of the things. Now, it not only uses elements, but you can use any CSS selector at all. So IDs, classes, attribute selectors, as I showed you before. And if you um, use, for example, I'm using hash main, what it will do is it will assume that I mean div with an ID of main. So there's all these assumptions. And another good example, I am the slowest typer in the world, um, or the fastest talker, depending on which way you look at it. Um, and that's how you can produce a bunch of HTML really, really quickly. Now, there's also a CSS module as well. And this is less of the nifty HTML stuff and more of just snippets. So you can produce a bunch, of HT, a bunch of CSS really, really quickly. Where it gets interesting is vendor prefixes. You just type the minus sign, what you want to prefix, hit tab, and it spews it out. So that's box sizing in this example. 
Uh, in the next example, I want to use box shadow. So it's all shorthand, you hit the tab, spews it out, oh look, there's multi-line editing all up in this mofo, right? So you can see the power. As a plugin developer for Sublime, you can really, really use that multi-line editing to your benefit. Um, it does other things like media queries. You just type the at symbol, M, hit tab, and you've got the media rearing to go. You just fill it in and live the dream. Now, there is a lot in this. Thankfully, they've got a brand spanking new website with all the documentation you'll ever need. Um, and there is a lot of documentation. I do find it's probably best to hit up the cheat sheet, um, which is this wonderful document, which has every command in Emmet ever. Um, it's also worth noting that it does any flavor of markup, so XML, HTML, XSL, if you're gonna kick it old school. Um, very cool, this cheat sheet. All right, the command line. Now, I'm a total noob at the command line, um, but I've recently started my, uh, living my life by this simple mantra. <laughs> a very, very wise man once said that, and it saved my bacon. Um, don't be afraid of the command line. And there, I'm just going to show you a way that I've kind of lessened the blow for me. Um, so I reckon get rid of bash and start using a different one. So I've chosen ZSH, Z shell. This is awesome because it's got pretty colors. That's why I like it. Um, and it's easy to change it. Um, for those of you who like live in the command line, you would know a better way how to do this, but I live in a nice... A Mac world where I hit preferences and I change some things. So that's how you do it on a Mac. Dead simple. Now, on top of ZSH, you've got this cool little framework called Oh My ZSH. And it's a community driven framework uh, built on top of ZSH with lots of functions, uh, autocomplete helpers, and plugins and themes and all sorts of things. To install it is pretty easy. Uh, you go to GitHub, you read the uh, readme file, you run this command, and it just pulls some stuff down and lets it go. Then you've got a bit of configuring to do. Um, this is my configuration file. Really, really simple. You can extend it as much as you want. But I find that this is pretty much all you need. If you do need anything more, they have this great, uh, you just go into the plugin folder, and you can see there are heaps and heaps of plugins that you can just chuck in there. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly go over one of my favorite plugins, and that's the Git plugin. So and I'm going to demonstrate a few things. So the astute of you would notice that I'm using tab completion, and I'm not having to use capitalization at all. ZSH just realizes that, oh, this thing might be capitalized, and I don't need to worry about hitting that shift key. So I just type away, hit tab, hit tab, and it kind of works out what I mean, um, which is awesome. So now I'm in my SAS folder. You can see the little yellow X. That means that there are unstaged things in my Git repo. Um, it also tells me down there that I'm on the master branch. Right? This is pretty awesome. From the command line, I can see that I'm in a Git repository. There are things that are unstaged, and I'm on the master branch. Um, this is great. Now, what you can also notice is there's a bunch of these aliases. Um, GST. Uh, stands for git status. There's gl, which stands for git pull. gc is git, uh, git commit. Uh, ga, git add. gp, git push. You get the idea, right? Um, very, very cool um, git plugin for the command line. I've actually found myself using the command line, uh, the git command line, more than any of the GUIs. Um, however, if you are more into a graphical user interface for Git. Uh, there's a great one for Mac called Tower. Um, of course, GitHub have got um, interfaces for both Windows and Mac, so look into those as well. So you can all breathe a sigh of relief. I'm going to move swiftly away from the command line, at least for a moment, um, and talk about taming your code. Um, we've dealt with Photoshop. We've made all the colors. We've compressed all the images. Let's actually write some code and deal with it. So who of you saw Walter's presentation? Awesome. Okay. So Grunt. He mentioned Grunt quite a bit. Um, 
He clearly knows much more about Grunt than I do, so I'm not even going to attempt to get as deep as he did. Um, what Grunt is, it's a build tool for JavaScript written in JavaScript on top of JavaScript. Um, it's kind of like Ant or Rake or one of those things. It's a bit of a mission to get your head around, but once you do, change your life. Um, to install, you just run the node package management tool to install it. Very, very simple. Um, and from there, you then have to install a, another bit that sits on top of Grunt. In this example, it's the Uglyfy tool. And what this does, it will um, minify JavaScript. And once you've got this tool installed, you then need what is called a Grunt file. Um, and this is what a Grunt file looks like. It's just the JavaScript object. You pass it a bunch of things. Um, as you can see, I've got an options, and in the options, I've got a banner. And what that does is it allows you to insert some text into the finished file. So in this case, I'm going to insert just a simple comment saying my demo JavaScript file. And then you can see I'm selecting some files. So the first bit there is script.min.js. That's my destination file, uh, my resulting file, and then JS jQuery and all the JS files in my plugin folder will get combined and minified into this one file. Then you go to the command line. Once again, we're on the command line. And you type grunt uglify, runs the tasks, produces the minified script, and you're good to go. Now, this is useful, but what's more useful is if you can watch a folder for any changes to files. Now, this is what Walter was talking about quite a lot. And watch, once again, you install it using um, node package management. You edit your grunt file. So I've added the little watch section, and it says whenever those files, any files in my JavaScript folder change, I'd like you to run a task. And the task that I want it to run is the uglyfy task. So now I go to the, my command line, and I type grunt watch, and then it just sits there, and it looks at that JavaScript folder, and it waits, and I edit the JavaScript file, and it goes, whew, something's happened. I'm going to run uglyfy. Minify your script, and we're good to go. So that's Grunt in a nutshell. I'm not going to get any deeper than that, but you can probably see how powerful it is. And you're probably all using it anyway and going, Darren, you're a noob. Shut up. Um, anyway, now I'm going to talk about front-end packet management. So Bauer is a project uh, built by Twitter. Um, these dudes are super smart. Um, although, as it turns out, they can't deal with um, hashtag spam. I don't know if anyone's noticed that. Um, anyway, Bauer is a packet management tool for the front end. Uh, think of it like um, node packet management for front end code. Uh, so you install it on node, of course, uh, and then you can search for a package. So find a package, you can search by name. So I want to search for SAS, and it'll return all the packages. Then you can install by going Bower install name, and it just adds it to your components folder. Um, you can also give it a GitHub repository. So if you've written some stuff, you can just say, install this GitHub repos repository, and it'll pull it down and put it in your components folder. Now, you can create a component.json file, which lists out all dependencies for a particular project. So in this case, I'm just starting a boilerplate. And each time I um, start a new project, I want to have um, jQuery, set, SAS, Bootstrap, Inuit CSS, and HTML5 boilerplate. Then I can just run Bower install from that folder. And it will read the components.json file and install all those things all at once. Super awesome. Really, really easy. Highly recommend that you use this product, Bower. OK, so now there's this other thing called Yeoman, which is all the things. It's basically taking um, Grunt and Bower, and it's adding this other thing called Yo. Now, what Yo is is a scaffolding tool. Now, in order to install this, no surprises there. You'll use the Node Packet Manager to install it. Um, and from there, you can run Yo Web App. So what I'm doing is, Yo is a scaffolding tool. It will build out folder structures 
and add a bunch of things. So when I run this in the command line, it'll ask me a bunch of questions. Would you like to include boilerplate? Would you like to include X, Y, and Z? And you just answer yes, 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 yes. And it will produce a folder with all of the things that you require. And as you can see, there is a component.json file for Bower. Uh, and there is also a grunt file.js for grunt. Um, so let's just jump into that grunt file quickly. And this is out of the box. I didn't have to edit this grunt file at all. I just ran yo web app, and it produced this grunt file, which includes CoffeeScript um, pre-compiling, CoffeeScript testing, uh, Compass pre-compiling, it's got live reload. This all just lives in that uh, grunt file. And another thing is the Bower component.js. Uh, JSON file, nothing too spectacular to look in there, but you can edit that if you need it. Um, then to get cranking, you just type grunt server. It then starts watching the folder. You can start editing away, write your SAS, your compass, your coffee script. It will compile and do all the things for you without you having to worry. Now that's great for when you're developing. If you want to actually build this, you run grunt, and it will go through all of those tasks in the grunt file, and actually produce a, a distribution folder which contains all the compiled and minified code that you can just push to your web server. Super awesome. Okay. Whew. Let's just have a breather, regroup for a second. Uh, there's not long to go. I speak very quickly, and I apologize for that. And wow, that picture's moving. <laughs> That's kind of what I felt like when I learned about um, Bower and a Grunt and Yeoman. I was like, what? Can I? Anyway, enough of that. Let's talk about GUIs for a second. Uh, as I mentioned before, not a programmer, designer, Mac user. I like an interface, uh, something with buttons that I can click. Um, so I'm going to introduce you to two products. One of them is brand spanking new. Uh, it's called Mixture. Has anyone heard of Mixture? Awesome. So, uh, Mixture is an app that does a bunch of things. Um, it does pre-processing, minification, concatenation, image optimizing. Um, it's got a templating language built in. It's cross-platform. Um, it's got live refresh built in. It's also got browser stack built in, which is mind-blowing. Um, it's got linting, and it allows you to quickly publish stuff online. So, what I'll do is show you how to set up a new project. So imagine this is acting like an interface for Bower. So what it's going to do is it's going to scaffold out a folder for me to start building. And in this particular case, I'm going to probably end up choosing Bootstrap. And I'll select a folder where I want that Bootstrap uh, project to live. I click Go. It runs off to the internet, does some magic, downloads a few things. <clears throat> Still downloading a few things. And then everything is OK. Now, what it's actually done is created this folder for me. And it has all my Bootstrap CSS, all my Bootstrap less. It's got HTML5 boilerplate. It's got jQuery, got Modernizer, got everything you need to start a front-end web project. And all I did was click one button. I didn't have to type anything in the command line. Thanks, Jeebus. Um, now, there's a lot of stuff that this app does that I'm not going to cover. It's got a fully fledged templating language, which can allow you to do like server-side includes without having to use a programming language per se. Um, have a look at it, mixture.io. It's an excellent application. Highly recommend you check it out. Um, the one that I love and use on a day-to-day -day basis is CodeKit. Any CodeKit users out there? Cool, there's one or two. That's brilliant. So CodeKit does all the things as well. Um, Pre-processing of CoffeeScript, of Less, Stylus, Compass, SAS, um, minifies on the fly. It does image compression, um, linting, which is very important. Um, the sad state of affairs, though, is that it's Mac only. But that's OK, because we're all Mac users, right? <laughs> Nervous laughter. <clears throat> anyway. This is how I use it. I'll have a project, and I'll crank open the project and drag my web folder into CodeKit. And in this case, um, I'm using Compass. 
that config.rb uh, basically says I'm going to use Compass. So I drag it on there. CodeKit goes, hey, I've noticed you're using Compass. It just realizes, and it sits there, watches that web folder for any changes, and does all the code um, that I need on the fly. Um, so like I said, it will do all my Compass and SAS stuff. It also keeps a keen eye on your JavaScript. And whenever you write anything, it'll run it through JS Lint or JS Hint, depending on how um, much you like to be beaten by a linter. Um, and it gives you growl messages as you're coding. Um, it's a great application. Highly, highly, highly recommend that you use it. So I speak very quickly. Let's just recap. We covered Photoshop plugins, right? Those were great. PNG alpha channel on 8-bit PNGs. Uh, if nothing else, just do that. Um, oh my ZSH, amazing thing. Uh, Grunt, Bauer, and Yeoman. Um, Mixture, which is brand spanking new, and CodeKit. Um, so because I've spoken very quickly, I suspect you're going to have a heap of questions. So let's just crank into those. Any questions? Yes. So Mixture has got the ability to it's got a web server built in. Um, and as a part of that web server, it also allows you to use um, browser stacks tunneling feature to automatically test on multiple browsers. So it will just load up a browser stack instance with your local dev environment on it. Was that the answer to your question? Uh, Nearly. Yeah, oh, right. Apologies. So Browser Stack is um, quite possibly one of the best websites known to man. Um, it allows you to do cross-browser testing um, in the web. It's a little Java applet, I guess. Who knew that applets still existed, but Browser Stack did. Um, and it loads up an instance of an operating system with a browser and allows you to test either live or with screenshots. And it does uh, mobile testing, full browser testing from like i6 up to i10, all of the Mac browsers as well. Um, and it also allows you to do tunneling. So if you're working in a local dev environment, it sets up a little uh, tunnel and allows you to test that stuff on the web through this magical tunnel that is clearly magic because I have no idea how it works. But yeah, it's a great app. Um, you've got to pay for it, but it's well worth every cent. Great. The Git plugin is called Git plugin. Um, <laughs> sorry to be obtuse, but it's uh, if you install oh my zsh, it comes with that Git plugin uh, already ready to roll. So you just add it to your config file, and you're good to go. Well, I am now officially out of time. Uh, thank you very much. Um, hit me up later on. Thank <clears throat> you.